And he's not too bad, but obviously he's a bit defensive. You want to say hello to the beautiful people? Okay, well, you go hang out on top of the fridge. <laughs> Get off the ice cap. Bloop. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that earthy, prehistoric face. Out of all the snakes in the snake collection, fertile ants have to be the most dangerous in the room. Ooh! Dwarf came in the world's smallest crocodilian. Look at that earthy prehistoric face. These guys only get just over about five feet long. And this girl is roughly about four or five years old. And believe it or not, at this size, being about like three and a half, four foot right now, she can actually lay 15 to 20 plus eggs. And we want to breed her. We have a boyfriend for her on the other side of the property. He's He's a decent size. He's older. He's a bit beat up from an old zoo display where these males were fighting. But we're going to do something even better. We're actually going to get her a male that's closer to her size, that's not too intimidating, and pair them up later this year. A good friend of mine, Mike Easter, is sending us about a four-plus-foot Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman male raised from a little hatchling in captivity. So it's got all its toes, got its whole tail, and hopefully in the future they're going to be breeding and we can produce the world's smallest crocodilian, the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. This is a nocturnal species of caiman coming out only at night looking for things like snails, rodents, reptiles, really just small crustaceans that can crush down and eat with those big thick jaws. These guys are very elusive, only eating little critters, creepy crawlies on the rainforest floor. And these guys are super common in the pet trade throughout the United States where they're not regulated like Florida. And I just got to tell you guys, if you see a baby caiman for sale like this, don't just buy it. You got to know what you're doing. If you want to own crocodilians like this, you want to work with crocodilians like this, go get a mentor, go work at a zoo, go do something like that instead of just trying to buy these animals and wing it because you're going to put the animal in harm's way and also put yourself in harm's way. You make one mistake with an animal like this and you're going to be missing fingers and you don't want to be in that position, right? Look at that beautiful Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. She's going to be such a good mom. With this enthusiasm, this cantankerism, she'll be like a great, great parent. Let's put her right back into the tub. Hopefully no retaliation. Woo! Get in there. Well, what's even more dangerous than her is her enclosure mate. This thing will rip your fingers right off. This is a giant Amazon river turtle. Believe it or not, this uh, this turtle's a savage. I know what you're thinking. Why would you put this this turtle with that caiman? Can't that turtle just bite the caiman's head right off? You're right. This turtle is a savage. I've put this turtle with the broad snout caimans, American crocs, saltwater crocs. This animal cannot be kept with any other crocodilians. The only one is the Cuvier's dwarf caiman because they both are from the Amazon. They both go, huh. Oh, you're from that hood too, hmm? You want to fight? No, I don't want to fight. Let's just, we'll be cool for now. But if I see any of those acutest of saltwater crocodiles, I'm going to nip their tails. So he's a bit crazy. And the Cuvier's Dwarf came as the only one he can be housed with right now. Woo! All right, let's close this up. Get this nice and secure. Put a lock on that. And let's go see how Kameo Humphrey Kamenesh is doing. My son, my one hump dromedary boy. Yes. Oh, my sweet, sweet Kameo Humphrey Kamenesh, my boy, my son, my moon. My son, my light. I said son twice because he is my son two times. Mm, I love him so much. And I know what you guys are thinking. Where's his brother? Well, we had to postpone getting his brother until the end of the month because he was a little bit under the weather and I had to get some fecal samples sent out to a vet to make sure he didn't have any crazy kind of parasites that they can get here in tropical areas like Florida. So he is all clear, no parasites. We think maybe it was just his baby bottles not being too clean. So now we're even deeper cleaning them with bleach, making sure that these bottles are deconned as much as possible so he doesn't get any tummy aches or anything like that. Now he's doing nice and good, and we'll be getting his brother at the end of the month. Another camel, a nice blonde, beautiful camel, so he'll have a nice brother. Two eunuch brothers. Anyways, we're also, oh, you done with that? You wanna say hello to the beautiful people? What do you have to say to the beautiful? Oh, you say no beautiful people, I want milk. I want the milk. And also, I know this is a bit random, but if anyone in the state of Florida has a baby Asian water buffalo they want to give to me, I would greatly appreciate it. I want to ride by camels, yes, of course, but why not have an Asian water buffalo to ride and feed apples? I think that'd be cool. Hey, just an idea. Hit me up in my email if you got baby Asian water buffaloes. Just saying, just saying. Come on, you done? Just a little, oh, what do you have to say to them? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. You want the rest of it? There you go, my son. No, yes, yes, no, yes, there you go. Look how big he is. He is a beast of a baby, only a couple months old. 
In the next few years, he's going to be towering over us. He's already taller than me when he puts his head up. Isn't that right? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss before I play with the mamba. How smart is he? He knows. He knows to kiss daddy. Uh, mm -hmm. What you say? Ah! <laughs> I love him so much. What is that? We should go do an update on the new black dragon that Stacy gave us as a gift. Okay, well you go hang out on top of the fridge. <laughs> go make that nest. Ooh, look, we got Casseray, the water monitor. That's what Stacy named him. It's after a Thai water god, I believe. And we're just gonna call him Cass for short. He's a beautiful melanistic water monitor. So all black, the opposite leucistic, which is all white. So he's got normal looking eyes and all black pigment. How crazy is that? And he's a good size, look at him. Got a beautiful flat rudder tail because these guys are very aquatic, hence the name Asian water monitor. And they'll use that flat rudder tail to swim through the water and also beat the crap out of the predator, belting them if they get too close. We've seen these guys out in Lumpini Park in Bangkok, Thailand, all over the place. What's really interesting is that even though this is a morph, a lot of morphs originate from the wild. So my buddies actually caught all black melanistic water monitors in Bangkok, Thailand, in the middle of the city. How wild is that? There's just so many lizards out there that once in a while you get a melanistic one popping out. Look at you. What's up, buddy? You can see in those eyes. They have the most beautiful eyes. They're so intelligent. Monitor lizards are the most intelligent family of lizards on the planet. They can be trained, they can be great companions, and they can be voracious predators, just like this guy. All right, let's put them back. Let's go take care of everybody. Woo! Mr. Pepe, my beautiful Mexican West Coast rattlesnake just shed. And you can't see it right now, but he pooped in there. He's on top of it. So we're just gonna open this up. We're gonna take him out, give him a nice clean. He looks so beautiful when he comes out of that shed. I mean, look at the scales, yellow, lime, beautiful, white. Let me just get him to turn around so we can gently get him out of there. Woo, look at that. That is a beast of a Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. He is so beautiful. I've had him for a few years now. He's not too bad, but obviously he's a bit defensive. You can hear with that rattle. He's saying, do not mess with me too much. I will give you a bite if you handle me the wrong way. So we're gonna gently just put him right into this can. I wanna be real gentle with him because I don't want that rattle to break. There we go. Even though it's not gonna hurt him if the rattle breaks, I love for my rattlesnakes to have full rattles. Naturally, when they have too many beads, they'll crack off and they'll start all over again. You can't tell a rattlesnake's age by the amount of beads. That's only gonna tell you how many times he's shed in the last couple of years, because eventually that will crack off naturally. Look at this nice, big, full rattlesnake shed. Let's see if I can gently open this so we don't break it, because I know the guests love to take home sheds from their favorite snakes from the show. Look at that full rattlesnake shed. Oh my goodness, with the rattlesnake's head. Perfect, look at that. We're gonna keep this for a guest on the next tour. If you guys wanna come see the animals, book a tour on chandlerswildlife.com. It's badass. Speaking of badass and shedding, look at this. Allison, the black mamba, just came out of shed. One whole complete shed, look at that! Perfect, and she went and did a spicy meatball. If she doesn't go into her lockout, which is actually kind of closed right now, I'm gonna have to fix that door up, uh, we'll probably just put her into this cage over here as a shift. It's not a vision cage, it's one of the venom proof cages. So we'll do that in a second. Uh, first, let's deal with Pepe. Get him nice and cleaned up, and then we're gonna soak Justina, deal with the Fertilance, and end it with Allison, the Black Mamba. Fingers crossed, no bites today. Oh, very nice. I like the Aspen for these guys, because it's easy to pull out the poop in one clump. Just gotta be careful with the fangs that they'll shed out, just like sharks, they go throughout a bunch of different teeth throughout their life, and sometimes they shed them, and they swallow them, and then poop them out. Sometimes you get poked by some poop. Put a thing sticking out of it. This water looks good, but not good enough. We need only the freshest. Don't. I'll see you guys in a split. Buy your CWL shorts today and you can do splits like me. All right. Nice clean enclosure. Time to put Pepe back. My beautiful, beautiful boy. Let's just gently get him out. Just gently scooping him. There we go. Ooh, look at that snake. What a beast of a rattlesnake. Obviously, never replicate what you see me do. I've been doing this stuff my whole life. If you try to replicate something like this, it's very easy to make a mistake and end up landing a bite. And that's a hard lesson to learn. Ooh, 
<laughs> so beautiful. Look at that. I love it when he just comes out of shed. He looks so nice. Nice and secure. So we're gonna take out Justina. We got a nice big tub of water right here so she can soak, help loosen up that irritating skin around her eyes and her face, hopefully making it way easier for her to shed. Let's just try to do this nice and smooth. We don't wanna stress her out too much. Come on. Come on. You coming? Woo! Come on, mama. I just wanna give you a nice bath. Nothing like giving my king cucumber a nice little bubble bath. Come on, let's go. She's so deep in shed. She's literally caked with dry skin. You can see her color is a bit dull, it's off. Come on. There we go. Nice and easy. Perfect. Yeah, she, her colors are completely off. And actually, I can see it flaking all over the place. Look at that. She's got almost like a, like a brown tint to her right now because of that shedding skin. It's okay, Mom. It's okay. Nice and easy, Mama. Let's get her right into the can. Just redirect her. Woo, hear her? Woo, she's growling like crazy. Listen to that. Woo! There's skin caked all around her face. Her eye caps are just dry. Woo. She's not having it today. Let's just try to get her in. She's like a tiger, like a lion. How she roars. Get her right in that water. Get her to soak. Easy peasy. No, not easy. It takes a lot of experience to be able to do that and execute it safely. Do not ever replicate the things that I do. All right, so the Fertilance has shed its skin. You can see there's poop in there as well. We have special insulation for this cage, so I have to be so careful when I open this up, he will shoot out like a dart. So let's just safely get that glass. All right, now it's open. You can shoot out like a missile. Get that glass up there. Let's use the stick pick to bring him out. We got a little glass terrarium we're gonna put him in for now because that snake wing receptacle is pretty occupied with Justina. Look at that beautiful Tharsio Pelo, the fertile ants, most responsible for bites in Central and South America. You can literally find these snakes behind a San Jose Walmart by a dumpster. Unlike all the tropical snakes in the rainforest that are highly affected by forest change or, or destruction of habitat, anything like that, this snake can be well adapted to be in an agricultural area, in a shed, anywhere. So that's why these snakes are so abundant and there's so many bites in Central and South America from these snakes because they're just all over the place. This might be a little bit difficult to get her or him inside this little thing right here, but we'll make it happen. Uh-oh. Okay, go nice and easy. Nice. There you go. Caught fertilance inside a little terrarium. This snake is so cool. Look at that beautiful face. And they have that like velvet coloration on the side of their body. That's how they got the name Tarsio Pelo. Out of all the snakes in the snake collection, Fertilance, Chinese sharp nosed viper, and the Bushmaster have to be the most dangerous in the room. This snake will literally shoot out of the enclosure with fangs poised, ready to inject you with a deadly amount. Such a beautiful snake. Time to clean the spiciest Fertilance meatballs. Because they're found in the Yucatan of Mexico, so that's accurate to say arriba. Nice and clean, good to go. We can put Tarsio pillows back, AKA my little friend, Jose. Jose might not look like much right now, but Jose is just a baby. He's only around two years old, and these snakes can get roughly seven to eight feet long. We've actually caught a six footer out in Costa Rica, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I wish you guys could feel this snake. It's actually got like a coarse, peeled scale feeling to it. It's rough scales. Such a cool snake. And he's pretty laid back right now, but I'm not gonna trust this snake because in a split second, he could just shoot out and lay some things right into you. So maybe over time we'll build a trust, but these guys have a nasty reputation for being pogo sticks with things. Wow, I wish you guys could feel what this snake feels like. It's rough and smooth on the belly. Oop, see the tail wiggling? Just like any other upset snake, they wiggle that tail to wiggle the leaf litter around them to mimic a rattlesnake, deterring predators. And if that doesn't work, deadly dose of venom right into the snout of something harassing it. Locked and secured, good to go. All right, I think uh, we're gonna take Justine out in the next 20 minutes, and then we're gonna take care of Alice and the Black Mamba. All right, so we got her soaking in here for a bit. We're gonna see what we can do for her. 
Uh, I just noticed that some of the big head scales have come off naturally, but you can see that her eyes are actually caked, and that's why she's so irritated right now. So let me see what I can do for her. Hear her growling like a tiger. What an intense name. Just a gentle grab. I'm not trying to muscle her down or nothing. We just want to make it easier for her. Oh, look at that. Look at my hand right here. All those scales coming off like nothing. That's, whoop, that's from soaking her. But we're going to keep her in the can for the most part. So she keeps soaking. What I want to do is just get those head caps and eye caps off. Woo, look at that, all that coming off. Super easy, just because I soaked her. It's okay, mama. But what we really wanna do for her is get off the eye caps. Watch this, the eye cap's gonna come off. Now she can see, woo! Now she can see about a lot better. So that's the eye cap right there. And you can see she's actually getting a little bit out of my grip because those loose scales, look at that, all of those scales are coming off. Look at that, perfect. It's okay, mama. So she can see clearly with this eye now. We just need to go to this side and gently get off the eye cap. Bloop. Just like that, little goggle. Let's see, looks like all those are off. This, these scales are coming off really easy. Look at this, they're just coming off like nothing right now. That's all because of that water. Just a little bit of water making it super easy for her to get nice and comfy out of that old scale. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. She's gonna feel real good after this. She might not like me still, but at least she'll be comfortable. Let's give her one more little dip in the water just to make that easier to come off. It's okay, mama. It's okay. Only if you guys can smell that musky scent of the King Cobra when it comes out of shed. What a stench that is. All right, so if you look right here, we got some Skin off the jaws, easy peasy, just like that. Now she's a lot more comfy. We're just gonna slowly pull off that skin. Look, most of it's already come off. Her first half is already shed. Look at that, beautiful. All of that coming off with ease, just after one soak. I was thinking let her do the rest on her own, but this is coming off so easy, might as well just help her. We're gonna look over her head real quick. There we go. And just gently let her skin drop off just a little bit. Relax. I'm just trying to help you, Mama. I'm just trying to help you. There we go. Holy, you relax now. Just like that, whoop, we got all of her skin off. Look at that. It's on the floor, it's all over the place. Now she's a beautiful king cover. Look at this. Woo! Beautiful Justina. What's up, mama? What's up? Just gently pick her up. Look at that. Now she can see. Now she's feeling a lot better. She may not love me, but at least she's comfy, right? You comfy, baby? Woo! What a beast of a king cobra. Love Justina. And soon enough, she'll have a way bigger enclosure, so we don't have to worry about that much more. There we go. Nice and easy, mama. Right back home. No, 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 come on. Come on. Back inside, let's go. Back up here, there you go. Right back inside the enclosure, nice and easy. Gonna lock on that, nice and secure. Good to go, just gave her a little bit of a hand, got off all of that old skin, and now she's feeling like a fresh Indonesian daisy. All right, Whew. I'm gonna throw this stuff away. Let's go deal with Allison, the Black Mamba. All right, so we gotta clear out this enclosure right here. This is where we're keeping all the baby cobras, and as you can see, we do have some live pinky mice with some of these snakes. The water dishes are taken out so those pinky mice don't fall in the water. Uh, some of these guys have eaten, not all of them have. So we're getting close to having to force feed these snakes. But look at this big chunky monkey, look at him. Beautiful monocled cobra, thick, just ate some food. Uh, this one too, look at that, two monocled cobras that have eaten. So good news, we do have snakes eating. We're gonna put these guys right here. We're gonna put Allison into this enclosure, a nice dark place to hide so it's not just a, a can that she wants to shoot out of. So let's try to make it as safe as possible. 
And also, I'm gonna try my best not to rip this Mamba skin. It is a complete shed, which is awesome. So hopefully we can pull this out without destroying it. And then maybe have like a little bit of a raffle or something to maybe win the skin or win a tour or something like that. Cause I know you guys would love to come out here. Not everyone can get a tour. Oh, look at that. That's a feeding response. That's what we have to be careful for. She thinks she's gonna get some food. After she laid all those uh, infertile eggs and shed that skin, she's gonna be real hungry now. So let's just gently get this open. Watching her at all times. Let me just get her first third, just like that. When I was teaching those army rangers a couple episodes back was basically you break a snake down into thirds when handling them. This can be applied to almost every species uh, to evenly distribute weight of the snake. So you break your snake down into thirds. So first third, middle third, last third. And I always put my hook in between the first and the middle third. And then I hold you near know, the cloak of the tail to make sure the weight of the snake is distributed. Look at that. Beautiful black mamba. Captive raised Tanzanian black mamba. Still dangerous, but not as bad as a wild caught black mamba. Fresh from the bush. All right, we're gonna put her right into this area. So she's good to go. Nice little place to hide. And we'll take her back out in a second after we clean up that enclosure. There we go. Just use the hook to get the rest of the body in there so she doesn't retaliate and come back out on me. There we go, come on. Nice and easy. But see, that wasn't too bad. It's a nice dark place. She wants to hide in there. Use that key right there, nice and secure. And now she's just gonna chill in this cage while I get her enclosure nice and clean. She is a beast of a mamba. To be able to work with a 10 foot long black mamba that's chill like that is remarkable. One day we're gonna have a really big one because Kobe is a male and they're the second longest venomous snake on the planet. Second to the King Cobra getting 14 feet. So Kobe's gonna be a big snake one day. Let's see if we can get that show without breaking it. Let's see how we can do this. Try and go super delicate because this is one perfect shit. Oh my God. The head scales, the eyes, everything looks perfect. Nice and easy. Woo, look at this. Look how big this skin is. Watch, I put it on the ground, stretch it out just a little bit. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So I'm just about six foot. There's a couple feet back there so you can see this mamba is huge. It's insane. Quick little update on Kevin the King Cobra. He actually ate another python, so he's gaining some size, looking good. I think he's gonna be shedding soon. We're just gonna leave him alone so he can digest that food. My king, my, my man, my, my everything. Let's take out Alice in the Black Mamba. Just get that enclosure opened up just a little bit so we can use the tool. Look at her, she is such a beast of a mamba. What a great snake to work with, being such a Intimidating species, but a great individual with an awesome personality. Look at that snake. Hoo, hoo, hoo. She's wrapping around my arm right now, which is something I gotta watch out for. She's puffing up just a little bit, wondering what the heck are you doing? No games today, Chandler. Beautiful coffin-shaped head. Only a snake keeper can love. All right, let's get her right into that. Oh, she just flashed her mouth at my knee. That's why they're called black mambas. The inside of that mouth is pitch black. But believe it or not, there actually is a black mamba out there, a locality that has black scales. And I'm hoping one day I can get my hands on that type of black mamba. All right, so now her door is open, her trap box is open so she can hide if she wants. She's got fresh water, clean enclosure. Oh, she looks just like she's gonna go in there right now, actually. She loves that box. Locked and secure, good to go. Plenty of new stuff to look forward to, guys. We got more animals coming, more crocodilians, more snake stuff going on. It's never ending. Follow your dreams, do what you love in life, because you never know where it's gonna take you. Look at me. I'm doing exactly what I've been wanting to do since I was a little kid in kindergarten. When I was a little kid, I used to draw exhibits for crocodiles, and now I'm building exhibits at my own facility. So follow your dreams. Anything is possible. Look at that mamba. Look at that mamba. That thing is gorgeous, baby. Big, beautiful, and Voluptuous. Anyways, love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams.